This is ESE 471 and I'm Neil Patori. I'm going to talk about why do bad fades happen to good channels and I'm going to give an example of Wash U's campus and I'm going to say I'm going to place a transmitter here right here in, in the middle of this plaza and I'm going to then have the receiver by me. I'm going to you know use my cell phone right here and it's got an antenna here and what I'm going to look at is how the power is going to arrive from the transmitter to my receiver. Well, there's going to be a direct path. There's also going to be paths that bounce off of buildings, bounce off of the ground, uh, bounce off of lamp posts, and scatter to my antenna. There are going to be paths that do multiple bounces, bounce off of multiple buildings, and then come back at my receiver from behind the camera. All of these paths make up multipath components that then the voltages of those signals add in a phasor sum when they arrive at the receive antenna. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about that total voltage that is measured at my antenna. It's going to be a sum for multipath from 0 to capital L minus 1, where capital L is a total number of multipath components in my channel. Each one is going to contribute some amplitude and some phase. The phase comes from the time delay between the transmission and reception. We're going to call that time delay tau sub L for the propagation between the transmitter and receiver. Okay, that time delay is a function of that distance between the transmitter and receiver because radio signals travel at the speed of light in air and if a wave has to go farther, then it has a longer time delay. The received power, this is a complex value, so I'm taking the amplitude squared. As I move the antenna further away, if I'm walking across campus, for example, if I go in this direction, the line of sight path is going to get longer. Some other paths are going to get shorter. And the actual rate of change of the time delay tau sub L is based on the angle in between my direction of travel and the angle at which the received signal arrives for that particular multipath component. So for these different paths, the time delay is getting longer or shorter at different rates depending on the geometry of the situation. You know a delay gives a Fourier domain phase change of e to the j 2 pi times f times tau sub l. So the phase change is then proportional to the frequency and proportional to the time delay. If I'm moving, this time delay changes. Let's take the example of one path. As I move my antenna and I have a single multipath component in my channel, as that tau sub l gets longer or shorter, it changes the phase of that path. It makes the phasor of V sub zero rotate around the origin, but it's always the same distance from the origin, so the power stays constant. Now let's consider when I have two paths. My movement has a different angle with respect to the angles of these two paths. Rate of change for tau sub L for these two paths was proportional to the cosine of the difference in the angle of arrival and the angle of my motion. So these two different multipath components will rotate around the origin at different rates compared to each other. And their sum, the V total, that is the distance of the sum from the origin, changes. Sometimes the two nearly cancel each other out. And so this is how bad things happen to good channels. The fact that sometimes these multipath components cancel each other out, we can't always predict exactly what will happen for any given placement of our antenna. And finally, there aren't always two multipath components, but things start to have even more entropy when L is greater than 2. Take, for example, L equals 8 paths, each with about equal amplitude. As these phasors rotate with different rates, the sum v total changes in its distance from the origin, and thus the power is changing. Sometimes the power is large, relatively speaking, and sometimes the power is nearly zero. This variable sum is called fading. It's a function of motion, but it's also a problem for stationary antennas as well, because the exact placement of the antenna results in some random phasor sum for all of the multipath components. 
And what system designers do is they include a fade margin. This is a loss that gets included in our link budget that typically doesn't get exceeded by our uh, multipath fading. But sometimes the loss in the received power due to multipath fading is worse than our fade margin, and we then lose our signal. You may have experienced this in your car. If you're listening to broadcast FM radio, you might stop your car at a stoplight, and all of a sudden your signal goes out. And if you inch your car forward a few feet, the phases of those multipath might go from canceling each other out to being constructive, and you'll get the, the signal back. Um, what might happen is if we have lots of multipath, those multipath can add together in kind of a central limit theorem and give us a complex circular Gaussian for our value of V total. Um, and in that case, you would see this plot. It's called a Rayleigh channel, and the fade margin that you need for the Rayleigh channel is given here. For example, if you set a fade margin of 10 dB, there's about a 9.5% chance that the signal experiences a fade worse than 10 dB. Um, as another example, you could set a fade margin of 30 dB, and there'd still be a 0.1% chance that the signal experiences a fade worse than that 30 dB fade margin. And this is a very severe problem in mobile communication since we don't usually have 30 dB to spare in our link budget. So there is a problem with multipath fading, especially when you have a single antenna uh, and you don't use a diversity technique like we're going to talk about in the next two videos.